manufacturing the drug. Go for Joe. Police are now on the hunt for pigment, urging the community to remain vigilant. Yeah, I know who this is. At this point, who doesn't? Joe is the only character I've ever done that broke through Mr. Heckles and Tom Pepper. So that's like, when, when a role does that, that's like big in, in my world. This movie has been kept pretty secret, so I wondered what it's been like to be involved with something so secretive. You know, you have to sign an, an NDA. All I got was my pages, and anything below that, like if you, my part ended in the middle of the page, the rest of the page was crushed out. So they didn't let me know anything. So I said, you know, wh what was the next scene? Or, and well, we can't talk about it. No, but you're in the movie, I'm in the movie. I mean, come on, man. No, I, we NDA. They really got strict, and they called me twice when I put something on, on Facebook. A fan asked me, hey, I hear old Joe might, might be. We didn't know yet. But fans know more about it than I do. So they say, you know, I'm, you might be. What, what can you tell? I can't, I can't tell you anything. Well, we heard that, blah, blah, blah. And then two months later, I found out the guy was right. I, how did he know that? But, but shooting it was fun. I mean, Vince Gilligan is, is a, just a wonderful director. So that was like the third time I worked with him. And he's a great writer. It's just so easy to memorize. I've, I'm, I'm dyslexic and I have ADHD. But no, his, his stuff, man, just goes right in. It's, it's amazing. Because yeah. that means that maybe it's not a learning disability. Maybe it's just your attitude, Larry, about good writing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that happens. You know, kids in school. I'm not interested in the subject. I can't learn it. Anybody can be homeless. Doesn't matter. You don't need a driver's license. You don't need a social security card. You don't need an invitation. You don't need a ticket. You don't need a passport. You don't need nothing. I, I was homeless for a year. Lived in my car for a year. You know, starving actor kind of thing. Uh, I graduated as industrial designer. So, I, and then I could have gone to GM. They wanted me to design future cars. You know, so that was kind of cool. But instead, uh, my best friend in college, Syracuse University, was Carl Gottlieb. Who knew that he was going to write all the Jaws movies? <laughs> Who knew? But he did. And so, uh, but we were friends, and he wanted to be a writer. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just didn't want to design cars. You're listed as, like, just homeless or homeless man on Monk or Joan of Arcadia, Malcolm in the Middle. And I, I, I wondered, I mean, what's... Is there a pattern? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> crap I had to go through just for my friends you know what are you doing man grow up what is this you know homeless guy if you watch Charlie Chaplin he's a homeless guy mm -hmm. guy was the most famous guy in the entire earth <laughs> he's like a billionaire what are you talking about grow up what are you talking about when these roles come to you is there I mean, is there an element of a surprise still, or is it like, okay, of course, we got another role, and they want me to play a homeless guy for a few scenes? I would but, jump at it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and as a matter of fact, I would fight to make the character homeless. When I would see the program, I would study the homeless character that I was doing. Joan of mm -hmm. Arcadia. Mm -hmm. It was a homeless guy that was actually God. Yeah. And here's the other th thing. There's a reason for it. It's not just that I picked it out just because I was homeless, although it, it informed mm -hmm. my character. Mm -hmm. No, it was that, in, in Charlie Chaplin's case, you own the righteous ground. In other words, Charlie Chaplin could steal an ice cream cone from a baby because he was hungry, yeah. man. Of course. So you have the, the, the moral high ground. Mm -hmm. You can attack anybody or anything given that you have nothing. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to attack. I mean, that that's the key of, uh, of, of satire, because uh, if, if you'll notice, you know, Lenny Bruce, but I, I could, Second City, The Committee, these are, mm -hmm. I mean, so those are my formative um, entertainment years, and they were all satiric, not funny. Mm -hmm. They were sat satiric, they were attacked. I call for a bear sending. Best assassin in history it's of church now. Yes! What does this mean for me and Barry? We we'll probably kill you, but I haven't checked there. with Goron yet. Bill Hader. Mm -hmm. I really respect Bill Hader. 
And he directed the episode, He correct? wrote, yeah. he directed, he's an actor. I just respect mm -hmm. what he does and how he does it. He knows what he's doing and he uses whatever he has to the best of his ability, always. And I just, so when I heard that uh, Barry was, I, a man, I'll do it, I don't care what. You just give me two lines, I don't care. I just want to be on the same, in the same room with that guy. It's the only role that I've ever did a backstory on. Because I come from co the committee in, in Second City, and you know, you know, uh, butcher, okay, boom. All right, here we are, and I'm, and I'm cutting meat. And I'm, you, you do the work, you do the process, and then you get out on stage, and you just go, man. But drama is another thing. Uh, so I thought, well, I'm going to do a backstory. And I had a huge backstory. It, it had the hints in the, in the, in the dialogue. Uh, but again, the writing on Barry, just, yeah. that's, so, so it was there. It was on the page, why, and everything. The whole upshot of how cool mm -hmm. Bill Hader is. Yeah. Now, I, I know from rumor that Woody Allen doesn't direct you if you're doing it right. Mm -hmm. Well, I started to find out that a lot of the great directors don't say anything. It's the casting. John Huston told me this. He also said it in an interview. He said, you know, 80% of the actor's role is casting. Bill Hader never spoke to me. And I was really on, on thin ice because I, this is a serious dramatic role and I wasn't getting any laughs and nobody was laughing, you know, off camera. Like, or the crew wasn't going, you know, which you kind of see out of the corner of the eye. Okay, I'm working, working it good. But after it was all over, Bill Hader, you know, he said, oh, Larry is dismissed, you know, okay. That. He came over to me and he just said to me, um, I said, well, I said, you know, good, n nice work, you know. And I said, thank you, but man, that was so scary. And I go, why? He said, well, you know, you weren't saying anything and I didn't know, you know. He said, oh, well, um, he's so cool. He said, I didn't want to say anything because that's not the way we wrote it. I go, what do you mean? He said, no, we had a whole different way of doing it, but what you were doing was so cool. I didn't, you know, I didn't know what to tell you. Hi, Mr. Heckles. You're doing it again. Doing what? We're not doing anything. We're, we're just sitting around talking. I can hear you through the ceiling. <laughs> My cats can't sleep. You don't even have cats. I could have cats. <laughs> Mr. Heckles, five times I was on it but it was over three years. Mm -hmm. And I was on the first time before we even came on the air. Mm -hmm. And I was on the third one they filmed. So they didn't know that it was gonna be a hit and they weren't famous. They were just like me. You know, I was a, a character actor, funny character actor that came in to do a role. But there's a difference between five shows and six shows. Five shows, you're still a one-off. But when they say, we want you for the sixth show, your uh, category changes. You are now a recurring. My agent calls me and says, hey, I got good news and bad news. What could the good news and bad news be, man? It's friends. You got your five. Boom, okay, I'm on the cusp. Well, what's the bad news? You die in this episode. <laughs> what? And I, you know, that's what I said. What? But I did go over to the writer. I said, who, who actually wrote the, I mean, it was on the script, but I said, just point him out, who, who is it? He said, well, I'm a beginner writer. That was my first script. And they said, well, how, how, how should I start? No, do, do you give me a topic or, he said, pick a character. And he says, I picked yours, I picked Mr. Heckles, because I, I really liked him, so I wrote an episode about you. It, well, you didn't get die in, that, in the episode. And they liked it and they bought it. They said, yeah, we're gonna do this. And then he said a couple of days later, they came to me, the writer, and they said one of the friends, the males, was moving out. So we, we had nailed that down, but then we just said, no, he can't move away, so we need to move him into an apartment. We had built Mr. Heckle's set, so we had an apartment set. So they had the set already, now he's moving out. Let's move him into Heckle's thing. Well, what do we do, Mr. Heckles? Let's give him a heart attack. What's your name, kid? Charlie Butts. Charlie's butt? Butts. Butts. Charlie Butts. <laughs> you got a funny freaking name, kid. Yeah, what's your name? 
Al Capone. <laughs> so I was on escape from Alcatraz, and I, there's two things I, I, I learned, you know, actor stuff. I was trying to pick it up. Okay, protect your character. Don Siegel comes up to me one day. I'd been on the set for a while. I'd been doing my part. And he came up to me, and I had a plot line. And I knew, cool, that means my character is important enough, and they can't cut my character, and they can't cut that, at least that scene. And I had done a lot of scenes where I didn't have a plot line, so now maybe I had two more plot lines, two more scenes. I'm cool. I'm going to get all my scenes in. And, and he comes up and he says, Don Siegel says, um, Oh, Larry, uh, cut this line in this next scene. And I look at him and I go, Oh, no, you, no, that's a plot line. <laughs> and I knew if, you, if he cuts the plot line, he can cut the scene. The line was, I, had, I was talking to Clint's character, and I said, and you, we're going Saturday. He, he, he said to me, we're going blah on Saturday. And I say to him, and, uh, I don't know about that. And he goes, why? And I say, I can't swim. And I said, no, i got to protect my character. You know, my character needed that. And I even told him, I, I based my entire, which was bullshit. But I said, I based my entire character on that line, man, that he couldn't swim. So it was, you know, in his head all the time. Well, when should I tell him? When should I tell him? And it was motivating me, which is bullshit. And he goes, uh, well, you'll say it in another scene. And when they escape, they leave me behind. I, I got that scene coming up, but it's later in the day. So I'm there playing cards with the crew who's not working, playing cards, and everybody who's in the table look up, and there's somebody behind me. We look around, and it's Don Siegel. He says, Larry, what are you doing? I'm playing cards. And my scene isn't until two hours. He says, um, you know what your scene is, don't you? Yeah, that's when I'm, I'm, I'm left behind. That's your, that's your crying scene. You go into your dressing room, if you have to slap yourself around, you do that. So I go into my dressing room and I'm slapping myself. <laughs> Silly, like he said. So I get on the set and he says, you ready to cry, Larry? And I'm going, yeah. And then he gets the camera and he moves the camera up and he, check it out, man. He moves the camera four inches. I, I mean, no, the camera's, well, I don't know, what is that, 12 inches from my face? This crew guy comes in with a perfume bottle spray, you know those things? And I said, what's that? And he goes, it's wintergreen. And he goes, roll them, action. And I go like this, and this guy goes, right off camera, wintergreen. Tears are falling down my face. Cut. Larry, that was great. Nice talking to you, Billy. Hello. Sabadoo. Gayo! Adam Sandler is not my cup of meat, mm -hmm. and or tea, um, matcha even. And his humor is is uh, I don't know. It's in, it's not an insult. It's put on. It's I I just don't like it because there's no value. And so one day we're at, we're at, at the lunch, and he's at this table, and I'm at this table, and he says, "Hey, Larry, come over here," and he goes, "What's this mouse thing that you do?" Now, in college, and I don't know how he found this mm. out, but in college, or in high school even, I used to do this funny face. What you do in the movie? <laughs> so he goes, I hear you do this mouse thing. Oh, that, yeah, wow, well, I don't, that's like when I was in high school. He said, why don't you do it, and, and, and do it for me. No, he said, do it for me here at the table. Said, no, come on, Adam, I, that's childish. He said, no, I hear it's funny. Just to get him off my back, mm -hmm. I did it. He goes, no, see, that's funny. I said, well, okay, so you think it's funny, but I don't, it's childish. We go back to the scene now, and it's a scene between him and his girlfriend in, in the back house mm -hmm. where he introduces his girlfriend to Carl. And in the middle of the scene, we're doing this scene. You know, blah, 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 blah. This is my girlfriend. Uh, girlfriend, this, this is Carl. Carl, do that uh, mouse thing. Oops. Carl, do that mouse thing for her. And I didn't think, you know, walk out of the scene. No, it was Adam Sandler. And this is, uh, you know, uh, more important, you know, and I just, okay, fine. You know, in the middle of the scene, the camera's rolling, and I did it. And I hated myself. Mm -hmm. As soon as I did it, you know, I said, I just, 
I should have walked out. But I finish the scene, cut, and then they go moving on. And all the time waiting for that movie to come out. That's all I thought about. Is it going to be in the movie? No, they, that was the only take. That was the first mm -hmm. take. And then they said, moving on. He, he knew, too. <laughs> don't, don't, no, we're not going to do a second take. He won't do it again. Mm -hmm. They just moved on. And I just, that was, okay, Adam, Adam Sandler is out of my life. <laughs> In trains, planes, and automobiles, mm -hmm. you know, the taxi, doobie, we're not riding in a road. Uh, that's in an a, a airplane hangar. That taxi cab had no wheels. It was up on boxes, <laughs> and there was guys running by with lights and, and uh, bushes. And the, the great thing about John Hughes is we improvised. The scene is in the movie is as written. Mm -hmm. We learned the lines, and that's what you see. But he had everybody go off book, each in his, in his turn. John, you said, okay, you two say the lines, and then Larry, you improvise. Then John and Larry say the lines, and Steve, you improvise. Then John Candy improvised, and you two. And then he said, okay, now everybody improvise. But we did that for half a day, just going around. And here's the, the amazing thing about John Hughes. Now he says, okay, now let's do it just one more time, just everybody, just... Do what you want to do. And we did it. And then he goes, all right, cut. Larry, you said this one funny line in, the, in that thing. And you said this. <laughs> he had memorized Everything. all the improvs. What is this about? Levels. <laughs> Levels? Yeah, getting rid of all my, uh, all my furniture. All of it. I am building levels <laughs> with steps completely carpeted. <laughs> the story goes that you had auditioned for the role of Kramer, uh, and then you're coming back for the show to essentially play this version of him, or play a person that's playing him. And I, I wondered uh, how you approached playing Tom Pepper, playing Kramer, versus how you approached Kramer in the audition itself. Now, I had seen Kramer, I had watched the show, mm -hmm. and I liked it, so when I got the audition, I, I really wanted to do it well. So what they did was they sent me a tape of uh, Cosmo mm -hmm. in, a, in an episode that was going to be the audition. So I could watch, this never happened before, where you can see the role you're going to do by watching the person who, who did it. So that's all. I watched it, you know, a lot of times. And then I just went in when I auditioned and I just imitated what I saw. It had nothing to do with acting or improvisation or process or anything. This is mimic. I mean, just bald-faced lie. There was nothing going on in my head. No backstory, no, I'm trying to do what, uh, what Michael Richards was. Just imitation, bald-faced mimic, a, a, a macaw, a parrot. Once I got the role, now I tried to make it even better. I noticed that a lot of mob people, at least in, in movies, but even I've seen angry, when they really mean, you know, hey, I'm not, I'm not fucking around now. Hmm. The less you do, hmm. the more you mean it. Mm -hmm. They're the, hey, fuck you. No, that's bullshit, <laughs> man. Hey, fuck you. It's working. <laughs> okay, so I, that's what I was doing. And Larry David just stands there and watches, and if you've got something to say, and he pulls you aside. Hmm. She says, I know what you want to do. And I go, what am I trying to do? What want? What am I trying to do? He goes, you're trying to do nothing. And I was so blown away because that's exactly what I was trying to do. And I didn't think he had it. So I went, oh, yeah. I mean, I just went, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, well, I, yeah that, that's what I'm trying to do. So he says, well, you're doing something. And he walked away. And I thought, that's the best piece of directing <laughs> I've ever gotten. 